Welcome back guys, Allison here. Are you facing the prospect of the upcoming holidays alone? Does that fill you with dread? If so, I can totally relate to this. I spent about 20 years of my adult life being alone for most holidays. And the holiday that was always the most difficult for me was Christmas. And so I'm really gonna focus what I'm talking about today on that particular holiday, but it really could apply to any holiday. Um, Christmas for me was always the most challenging because I had grown up in a family where we had, you know, big Christmases. My mother loved Christmas. I, when I was uh, first married and my son was young, we had big Christmases. So being alone at Christmas was probably the most difficult for me. But as you're listening to this today, kind of apply this to whatever holiday fits for you. So before I go into some do's and don'ts that you want to use to help make the holidays go easier if you're alone, please, if you get something out of this today, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. So facing the holidays alone, nobody really wants to have to do that in their life. Unfortunately, it happens. It happens sometimes only one or two years out of our lives and sometimes many years. The first Christmas I spent alone was Christmas 2002. And I had broken up with a boyfriend of 13 years just a few months prior to that. It was going to be a really challenging time. I was doing bereavement counseling at that time. And that made it even more challenging because I'd been working with people who were going through loss and yet I was going through my own loss and really didn't know how to deal with that effectively. So I, I was only getting a few days off at the holiday and so I decided to, I lived in Arizona at the time, I decided to drive over to San Diego, spend a couple of nights and be able to at least be by the ocean. And I thought maybe the ocean air would make me feel a little more healing or a little, you know, easier in my mind. It helped a bit. It certainly helped being by the ocean, but I did cry a lot that holiday. I cried in the car driving over there. I cried while I was there. I cried driving back. But I did start to learn some things that would be helpful to use at Christmas time, basically being alone. And of course, at the time, I had no idea that I was going to be alone for the next almost 20 years of Christmases by myself. So I'm going to go into some do's and don'ts for what will be helpful to get through the holidays. And I'm actually gonna start with the don'ts and then get into the more positive do's <laughs> that you want to use. So the don'ts, I would say the first one is don't try to replicate past Christmases. In other words, don't try to have the Christmases of your childhood. It will never be the same, it will never feel the same, and you'll always feel like something's lacking. Don't try to replicate the happiest Christmas you ever had. And if you're alone, you're never gonna be able to do that. So don't try to replicate past Christmases. The second thing which is related to it is don't focus your mind too much on the past and on all the happy holidays you had. Don't keep thinking, oh, it used to be like this or that, because if you get stuck in that, you're never gonna be able to enjoy what you, what you do at that time. The third thing is, while it may be good to go somewhere, like I did that very first Christmas when I was alone, I would really recommend you not go to some place like Las Vegas or a gambling hotspot or a bar. <laughs> Anything that's going to encourage what I call negative behaviors, behaviors that actually will probably not serve you well. Um, drinking a lot is not gonna help Gambling a lot is not going to help. Uh, a lot of negative behaviors that you might do. I mean, there are other times in your life where it's fun to go with a group of people to Vegas or whatever, but Christmas, not it. My mom had this friend that used to go to Vegas every Christmas because she was alone. And she spent the time drinking and gambling and just in a way making herself more miserable because then she'd usually lose money and you know spend far more than she expected to and then she'd go home. But that was the way she chose to do it. I don't recommend it. I think if you're gonna go somewhere, and I talk about this more in the do's section, that please go somewhere that's you know, going to be uplifting or positive for you. So that's another don't that I would say, don't do that. 
Um, the other thing is don't stay in bed all the time and put the covers over your head. It's perfectly okay to cry. And you know I'm a big advocate for crying if you've watched some of my previous videos. But staying in bed and not getting dressed or taking a shower for days on end around Christmas or whatever, it's not gonna help your spirits at all. Please don't do that. Um, get up at least, get some clothes on, take a shower, make yourself a nice meal, do something positive for yourself. And if you feel like crying, then cry, but you don't have to stay in bed the whole time. Another one that I would suggest and this one I had to kind of learn the hard way, um, don't do this, is you're gonna find that when you're alone, random people, acquaintances, sometimes friends that you have, will invite you over to their house for Christmas, okay? Do not fall into this trap. <laughs> it's just, um, I tried this about three different times and I have to tell you that it was a mistake every time, okay? so. Don't go to someone you barely know, their house, to meet their family or friends or whatever at Christmas and spend Christmas Day with them. You will end up being way more miserable because it will highlight to you how, how alone you really are because you're not part of their family. You're not close to them. And I you know, made the mistake of trying about three different ways of doing this over the last 20 years. And after the last one, I was like, I'm never doing that again. Now I would give a disclaimer to this. If you have a very close friend who you already know their family and they want you to be part of their family at Christmas, that's different. You already know these people, you're close to them. They feel kind of like your family. If you have that situation, embrace it please take them up on it. But if it's just, you know, a casual friend at work or someone you met in your community or, you know, a, a real random acquaintance, you know, somebody you don't know very well at all and you've never met their family or don't know their family well, don't go. You will be miserable doing this, okay? They will be sitting there. I had one time, one of the three times I did this, I went with a woman that I knew from uh, when I was teaching at the community college and I went and I didn't know her family ahead of time. I'd known her quite a while, but I didn't know her family. I go to their house. Uh, not only did they, you know, have all these little rituals and things they did on Christmas that they kind of made me a part of, but they actually exchanged their gifts in front of me. All their gifts in front of me while well, I just kind of sat there was very, very um, awkward at the very least. <laughs> and and it, was, it was really sad for me. You know, and at one point, I think they had like a little extra present of a candle or something and they gave it to me like a little token, you know, but oh, it was horrible. And I left there and I thought, oh, I, I'll never do that. And I'm not blaming people that try to do that. Don't get me wrong. When people invite you to their house, they really are, I think, trying to be generous and include you. Thing is, you're never going to be part of that. So don't put yourself through that. So those are my main don'ts to do during the holiday. So let's focus now on the do's. These are the things you would like to do during the holidays. The first is, I already mentioned this, if you need to cry, cry. Okay, so if you burst into tears at random moments during the holidays, that's fine. You will cry it out for a few minutes and then you'll move on and maybe you'll have another burst of tears the next day. That's fine, go ahead and cry. The other thing to do is create new uh, rituals for yourself. So if your family always did Christmas a certain way, just start doing it differently. Put up a different kind of tree, use different colors. Maybe you won't use a tree at all. Maybe you'll um, <clears throat> decide that for you, the Christmas ritual, maybe a new ritual would be going out and taking a drive and looking at all the Christmas lights on Christmas Eve or a couple of days before Christmas. Find new rituals that will give you some joy. Um, the first, Probably one of the first times that I was spending Christmas alone, I incorporated this little ritual on Christmas Eve where I watched my favorite Christmas movie, which is the 1951 version of A Christmas Carol. I will discuss this more in a future video before Christmas, little teaser there. But um, 
I generally, I will watch that movie on Christmas Eve while I'm sitting in bed with my jammies on, with some hot cocoa and the lights dimmed down and just the movie on the screen. And I always cry when I watch that movie, but it's always a beautiful movie and it's always got a beautiful message. And so that is a ritual I do every Christmas Eve for myself and it feels wonderful. And I never used to do that growing up. I never, you know, did it quite that way or I mean, I'd watch the movie before, but not in that way. So find a new ritual for yourself and it will really make you feel tremendously better. The other thing is if you can, if you have the money to do it and the, you know, and you have the time off to do it, go somewhere for a couple of days. When I went to San Diego, I really think that was the best thing I could have done that year. It was a tough year, the first year of being alone like that. And I think I did, it was much better to do that than just be at home. So if you can go somewhere that is going to uplift your spirits, that you are going to feel better, go somewhere for a night or two during the holidays. You know, if you want to go see snow, go up into a snow area. If you want to go by the ocean, do that. Find a place within, you know, not too far away and you don't have to spend a lot of money and go be, you know, be in a better location. It will make you feel a lot better to do that. The other thing I would suggest is do something positive for yourself during the holidays. It doesn't necessarily have to be on Christmas day, but one thing I do at New Year's, but you could also do it at Christmas, is I, I just make a, a little list of all the things I still wanna do in my life. It's kind of like a bucket list. I don't really love the term bucket list, but it's kind of like that. It's like, what do I really wanna still do? And I get myself all excited thinking about, oh yeah, there's still this and this and this and this that I can still do. And so I will sit and make out a list of that or even plan out a specific thing that you wanna do the coming year. That's a really positive thing to do even at Christmas because that's towards, you know, right almost at the end of the year. So I think that's a good one as well. I would say another thing that is really good to do is do something productive around your house. Use that time, not just to do cleaning or something like that, but maybe you really want to organize something in a, in a more efficient way. You want to re, you know, organize your kitchen or move your furniture around. Do that at the holidays. It will make you feel like some, some kind of renewal. Something, you know, has changed in your life. So I really recommend doing that. And then, of course, my list of do's would not be complete without saying that please eat chocolate. <laughs> just, now, if you can't eat chocolate, do not eat chocolate. But if you can eat chocolate, chocolate always makes Christmas better, just saying. I have to share this little story. My, when I was a child, my parents, um, from the time I was probably two years old, I guess, I don't know, my parents always got me a whole bag of Hershey Kisses and put it in my stocking because I loved Hershey Kisses. Um, and what's funny is that's the only time of year I eat Hershey Kisses now is at Christmas. But, but when I was a kid, man, I loved Hershey Kisses. And I loved them so much that I would dig into the Hershey Kisses before I even opened a present. I mean, the candy was way more important. So yes, I am, I admit it, I'm a chocolate. So the thing is, is that chocolate always makes Christmas better. Just take it from me, I'm a pro about this and I know what I'm talking about. So anyway, those are some, some do's and don'ts for the holidays and hopefully they'll help your holiday go smoother if you're alone. I hope most of you are not alone, alone for the holidays, but if you know anyone who's alone, please share this video with them and it might help them during the holidays. Otherwise, please enjoy your holiday, whether you're with family or friends or you're by yourself. And I will add one more advantage of being alone for the holidays. When you're alone for Christmas, you don't have to listen to your family bicker, which is really actually kind of nice. There are no family arguments. So that is, that's a big plus actually for the holidays. So anyway, until next time, please be well, keep moving forward, make a plan for some positive things during your holiday, and I'll see you next time. Take care, bye.